comes up that I'm not explaining well enough, make sure you just stop me. There's a big clarification. Uh, there's obviously many, many things in an offense, and we have 45 minutes here to work in this first one. So uh, what I've decided to do is do something that's really important to us. Uh, obviously, we throw the ball, and, and we, we threw it you know, quite a bit. We were always you know, number one or two in the nation in passing and in total offense. So it's, it's really important to us how we teach the kids who are doing it. So what I'm going to try to do in this first one is we're going to talk a little bit about the, the very specific techniques of how we teach receivers to be very good receivers. And we've had some excellent ones. And at the very end of this, hopefully if we have time, I'm going to take one route and I'm going to walk you through the route very specifically as to how we teach it and, and how quarterbacks look at it and how it's kind of built, you know, and how we build that route. So hopefully we'll have time to do that. Um, as receivers, uh, and, and we're, we're, we try to be very careful of this too. You know, whatever you do as an offensive system, you have to decide uh, what it is that you want to emphasize. Whatever you emphasize, they will get better at. But if, unless you have a clear idea in your mind as to what you're emphasizing, then it, you start to just touch on everything. When you touch on everything, ultimately, unfortunately, they don't get really good at anything. So we're, we're real specific in that there's certain things that we're going to emphasize very, very clearly. And we've made a decision that this is what we're going to emphasize. So in this particular one, we're talking about receivers and how both they run routes and also how they catch the ball. Uh, it, it may seem rather elementary, but it's really, really important to us. For us, just at the very base beginning, as we start with receivers, we're going to tell them that we want them to catch with their thumbs together. Okay, so as they catch the ball, your hands are much stronger this way than they are this way. So because your hands are stronger this way, we're going to teach them, and we're going to emphasize, and we're going to correct it in practices, we're going to correct it on film, so that they get to the point that as they catch the ball, if they have a, a choice in it, they're going to try to catch it this way as opposed to this way. Okay, because your hands are much stronger this way with the thumbs together. So we're going to talk to them. You're going to see our receivers quite often catching like this. And, and obviously he's a very good one. He plays with the Denver Broncos right now. Uh, he's, he's quite good. Uh, but he had to learn how to catch correctly. Okay. Uh, we want to reach back with both hands and catch the ball in the noose. This is the noose. Okay. So the, 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 the thing we're trying to emphasize is we have a particular language we use, and we don't get too far away from that language. In other words, when I'm telling him how to catch a ball, I'm not describing it three, four, five different ways. I'm going to say, catch it with your thumbs together, reach back and catch it with both hands, and that's all I'm going to say to him his whole four years with us. I'm not going to describe it different ways. We have a language we use in our teaching, so we always use the same language, and all coaches use the same language. So they hear the same thing, the same language in teaching. So we, we make a very specific thing that we've already decided, this is how we're going to teach it. Okay? These are real simple things that we do in the summertime with them. And all we're trying to do is teach them how to catch with their eyes. And they have to follow the eyes all the way to their hands. So they're, they're catching it all the way to their eyes. And again, these are pretty good kids. This is going to say this kid went to the Denver Broncos. Uh, the other young man is a real small kid. He plays for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, and he's, he's only 5 foot 8. And he's only 170 pounds. But he learned to do things correctly. And because of that, he's become, you know, he's become outstanding as a receiver in the NFL. Now this is a, this is a drill, we can freeze this a little bit. This is a drill we do every single day before practice. And it's designed, and there's coaches right there with them. Uh, this was actually filmed in the summertime, so we couldn't be out there. 
but in practices, we're right there with them. They're going to go down once and back once, and they're catching the ball just with their thumbs together like this. Okay, and they're, they're, we're making them, forcing them to do this, because they're, they're not thinking about anything else at this point. They're not thinking about routes. They're not thinking about coverages. They're, all they're focusing on right now is how to catch the ball correctly. So they're going to go everybody down once, everybody back once. And then the second time through, we're going to, quarterbacks are going to put it on their back shoulder. And they're going to learn to turn their body back and catch the ball with their thumbs together. And we always talk in terms of turn your body back to the ball. Turn your body back to the ball. So right now they're just going through and we're going to abbreviate this thing. All they're doing is catching it with their hands. Now again, I hope, I, hope, I hope you can see these. If you yeah, we'll from the end zone out. Okay. If you watch Emmanuel, he's going to catch it with his thumbs together. He can catch it any way he wanted to, but he's choosing to catch it with his thumbs together. And we go all the way down to the knee on that one. Anything past that, they have to catch it with their thumbs out. They, they, you can't catch it like this. So right down to their knee, they're going to catch it like this. And they're going to take your body down to it. Because they say your hands are much stronger this way. So you can see him, he's going down and he's catching it with his thumbs together. You can see it better from the end zone. As he's coming across, He's going to catch it with his thumbs together. So he's going to catch it just like this. He's not going to catch it like this. Your hands can break, and I don't mean break, but as the ball goes through it, it's going to break your hands and you're going to lose the track of the ball. So there's two things that happen. The more you catch it like this, the tendency is to catch it behind your, your body. The more you catch it like this, the tendency is to catch it in front of your body. And we want you to catch it in front of your body because that's where your eyes are. You're going to catch this with your eyes, with your thumbs together. So on, on Cole here, he's going to catch it here in front of his body, and he's going to catch it right in front of his eyes, thumbs together. He's not going to let it get out here, out away from his body. He's going to catch it in front of his body with his hands together. Same here with this one. Thumbs are together. Thumbs are together. So you, you will very seldom if ever see our kids ever catch it like this. Because uh, we've just found over a long period of time, because we throw it so much, that there are too many drop balls this way. So we've now taught them they all catch it this way. Um, and we want them, you know, basically the same thing. If they're running a post route, rather than catch it this way here, where it goes past your eyes, we want them to catch it this way with their thumbs together in front of their eyes. Okay, so their eyes are on the ball the entire time, and they're catching it with the strongest part of their hands. And yeah, I know, you know, He's only five foot seven, but okay. Now, if if we can see the end zone, yeah, this exactly. freeze at the top. What we're trying to do when the ball is thrown behind us, and and we've gotten to the point uh, where, and we've gotten actually pretty good at it. Our quarterbacks will purposely throw the ball behind a lot of times to make sure it's done correctly. Uh, we don't want them to. We, we want them to very specifically. Now it's going to be hard to see. As they turn, we want them to turn their body back to the ball, not just reach back like this. So you'll see these guys, as you watch them, every single one of them, it's not an accident, they're all doing it this way. When the ball is thrown behind them, their whole body is turned back to the ball. Okay, so, and we work on that in practice. So when the ball is thrown behind them, they're turning their body. And we actually, that's the language we use with them. Turn your body back to the ball. Turn your body back to the ball. If you watch right here, 
He sets him. He'll turn his body back to the ball. He's going to turn it. And literally, if you can see it when you're freezing, it's hard because it gets dark when you're freezing. He's literally facing the ball when he catches it. Okay, and that's not an accident. He's taught to catch it that way. And it's our belief. So he's facing this way. Even though the ball, is, he's running this way for the ball. He's turned his body back, so he's actually facing the ball. And we've done that. It, as I say, it's not an accident. You'll see our kids do it over and over again. And we believe. And it's just our belief. If he had tried to catch that this way, he would not. He would have caught it because the ball is thrown here. And it's thrown there on purpose to stay away from the defensive back. But when he turns the ball and he's now facing the ball, it's much easier for him to catch it that way. So, and again, these are not accidents. This corner has no chance in that ball. If you can see that one more time on the reverse, on the reverse effect for the, just the end zone. So he's turned, so he's facing the ball as he catches it. And it's not an accident. And you're, what you're seeing is every one of our kids is doing it this way. This is a different receiver. And we'll watch him from the end zone. It's a different young man, but he's going to look exactly the same. He's going, to turn his, he's going to turn his body back to the ball. He's going to look exactly the same. He's in the exact same position that Emmanuel's in. He's going to turn his body back to the ball. Okay. It's not an accident. Okay, They are taught to catch it that way. Because that's how they're strongest. When they're facing the ball and the thumbs are together. Okay. So they're going to turn their body back to the ball and catch it with their thumbs together. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to circumvent some of these things so we can get to the routes at the end of okay. the okay. Yeah. This is Al right here, and he's doing the same thing. As the ball's coming, he has the choice to catch it this way, and a lot of people do. But he's turning specifically to catch it this way, because that's how his arms are stronger. Plus, he's going to catch the ball quicker than the defensive back can get to him. He catches it here, and the defensive back has more time to get his hands on the ball. He's going to actually beat the defensive back to the ball by catching it out in front. And he's doing it specifically. He's turned his hands and bodies back to the ball to catch it specifically that way. And you can look at every one of our receivers, they're all different kids, but they're all catching it the same way. Because it's taught that way. Again, he had every opportunity to catch it this way, but he turned and caught it this way. And these guys, you know, when they when they depart us, this young man is playing for the Baltimore Ravens. Emmanuel's playing for Denver, and Cole's playing for Dallas. They've all come back and said the same thing, that the techniques that they're taught, they were taught, is what helped them make it in the NFL. And actually, other receivers were asking them how they did that, because they, they knew that that was a benefit to them. He's going to do the same thing. See, he has every opportunity to catch it this way, but he turns and catches it with his hands and thumbs together. Okay, let's go. Oh, this is uh, behind. Okay. Yeah, now this is them. This is the drill where they're catching it behind. If if we can try to freeze it, if you look at them as they're doing this drill, as they're running, they're actually turning their body all the way back and they're facing the other way. Okay. If you watch him, so he's he's facing this way now as he catches the ball. And again, that's how we're teaching it, and how it equates is what you see in catching in the games. That's how they're catching it in the games. But they have to be trained to do this. And this is a drill we do every single day. It's one of the first things they do. It's a catching drill that takes five minutes to do. They run through one time, catching it this way, and then they run through, everybody goes down and back, where the quarterback puts on the back shoulder, and they have to turn their body back <clears> to catch the ball. So Emmanuel is actually facing this way as he's catching that ball. Okay, and that's, again, that's what we're trying to advocate. We're trying to teach to that, to make sure that they do that. Now, sometimes your quarterbacks can't always put it on the back shoulder, but you know, they get better at that as they go. But this is something that, again, you, you make decisions. You make decisions as what you emphasize and what you're going to get better at. Whatever you emphasize, they're going to get better at. If you emphasize it, the 
they will get better. But for us, if we're going to throw the ball, our kids have to be able to catch the ball. So we're going to tell them, we're going to teach them how to catch it correctly, and if the ball is behind them, turn your body back, catch it correctly that way, and that's something that they're going to do every single day. the same thing. He's got a post route here. He's making a decision to run the post route. And if you see it from the end zone, same thing. The ball's thrown behind him. He turns his body completely back to get to the ball. And he, it's a much more secure catch when he turns his body back to catch the ball. It's a much more secure catch because he's literally facing the ball. Okay? And that's really important to kids. If, if the ball's going to be thrown behind him, you're just going to turn it. You, you have less chance of catching it. You turn your body back to it, and you're going to catch it. Again, just, you'll see bees. He looks exactly the same as Emmanuel and Terrence. They look exactly the same as they catch it. It looks very easy and looks very natural, but it is very trained in them. It's, it's something that's very specific to them. Reach back and catch it. Turn the body back and catch the ball. Turn the body back and catch the ball. This young man was with the Atlanta Falcons for a while. But they all learned these techniques, and it, a couple of them went off and played an all-star game in their senior year, and other people were asking them, you know, how are you catching it like that? I mean, you just saw him just naturally turn his body back to the ball and catch the ball. It's our contention, if he doesn't do that, I don't think he catches that ball. Now, they're looking, they're making it look very easy, but the reality is, with a ball sound, if they don't do this, they don't catch the ball. Turn your body back and catch the ball. Turn your body back and catch the ball. And again, we use the same language. We're always saying, turn your body back and catch the ball. Turn your body back and catch the ball. We're not trying to describe it in a lot of different ways. Second thing, when you have receivers running down the field uh, and you're wanting them to get past the underneath coverage and they're, they're trying to run posts and they're trying to run streaks and corners, what can happen to a lot of receivers is, as particularly slots, as they're running, they have peak defenders are trying to put their hands on them and trying to push them and reroute them so they get rerouted out of their routes. So we have to teach our receivers how you don't get rerouted. So you run very smoothly past them, and you get, without getting rerouted all the way around, go straight down the field. So we have a, we have, we call it, we have a hand technique thing that we teach them, and, and again, back to language. If, if I'm going down the field, and I'm a slot, and I'm starting my route, and I got a, a, a Sam linebacker or a nickel or somebody that's standing right there, and he's going to try to reroute me, then what I have to do is we say we set him to his technique. Okay? And set him to his technique means wherever he is. So if he's inside of me, as I'm pushing down the field, he's inside of me, as I get to him, I'm going to set him inside and go outside. So wherever his technique is, I'm going to set him to that technique and go outside. If he's outside of me, and I'm pushing down the field on my route, and he's outside of me, I'm going to set him outside and go inside. Because that freezes them. Okay? It makes it very hard on them to get their hands on them. A couple things specifically about it. What young kids sometimes do, as you're teaching this technique, is they set them too far away. So they see he's outside, and they get within about three yards, and they try to do this, and that doesn't do anything to them. They have to get to them. They have to get right on their feet and set them and go. And secondly, if they try to put their hands on you, so he's trying to jam you with his hands, then we're going to take our hand. If it's, if it's his left hand that's trying to jam me, I'm going to take my left hand, 
And as I said, I'm going to take my hand in. Boom. I'm going to knock his hand down. I'm not going to get up here and do it. It's going to be right here. Boom. And I'm just going to take his hand, knock it down as I go. So we're going to set him. If he's trying to put his hands on me, I'm going to get his hands off of me. And I'm going to go right by him. Okay? Our rule is head up to inside, set him inside, and go outside. If he's outside, set him outside and go inside. And we'll show you, uh, I'll try to, if we can get, uh, get that boy. We, this, yeah. is, this is them just doing it with their hands, just working on just getting their hands off of them. Now, now they're working on setting and getting their hands off of them. Okay. Yeah, let's go to uh, the Hawaii practice. We've got some clips of, uh, in Hawaii when we were there actually at practice, down in the red zone. And some of our real good receivers there were working on setting people. Okay. okay. You want to see these two? Or um, that's right. That's cover two. Yeah, that's cover two. I'll talk about that later. Okay. Okay. I have a point now. Yeah, yeah, this okay, this is uh, this is one of the slots, this is the other slot. Uh, why don't we run this through first? I'm okay. gonna see which one it is. Okay, yes, good, this is good. Okay, let's go back. This is a young man, he's a true freshman. He just arrived, he was completely out of his own. We're way out there in the Pacific Ocean in Hawaii, and he's from Pennsylvania. He got out there and he was lost. So, he's young, and he did what a lot of young receivers naturally do. As he's pushing out of the field, there's a guy inside of him. What they naturally want to do is they want to avoid. So as they're going, he's going to try to go this way and go around him. And by doing that, you actually help the guy because it, it just moves him into you to push you. So if you watch him, this guy is in the dog. This is the guy who's trying to jam him. He's trying to make a decision off this guy. That's in this particular route. If this guy gets outside of him, he's going to run the post. If he stays inside, he's going to go flat. So he's trying to get to this guy to make a decision. But to do that, he's got to get past this guy. This is the underneath coverage. This guy's going to try to jam him. He's going to try to go up here, and he's going to try to avoid him, and he's going to get jammed. The route is done. It's over. Okay? So this is what a young receiver tends to do. Route's good. It's over. Okay, now let's look at some kids who really know what they're doing. Okay, right here, this is Ryan. Uh, this guy is going to try to jam him. He is outside of him. This is the same route. He's, made, he's got to make a decision off this young man. Is he inside of him, and does he stay inside of him? If he stays inside of him, he's going to go flat. If he works his way outside of him, he's going to go post. So he's trying to read him, but he knows in order to get to him, I've got to get past him. I've got to get past this underneath coverage. So this guy is trying to put his right hand on him to jam him. But Ryan is actually going to come at him, He's going to set it right at his feet, real quick, this way, because that, that's his technique, outside. He'll set it, boom, outside, go inside, and come flat. And he doesn't have a chance. That's the exact same route that we just saw, but now he's gotten through the underneath coverage, and he's able to get past them. Um, the other thing you'll see, and I don't think you can freeze it quick enough here, but as you watch this young man, and we'll go back and try to freeze it right there, this is what happens to guys when you do this technique. As you're coming at them and set them, what it does to them, it gets them in this wide base. They get wide base with you because they don't know what you're going to do, and now they're dead. They can't do anything in a wide base. Defenders have to be in a base like this. You get them like this, and they can't do anything. So if you watch this young man and see how wide his feet get, he had no choice. He had no ability as an athlete anymore to do anything with him. You see the same thing? You see Ryan one more time, then we'll go to Devon. Set him, set him outside, go inside, go flat. Coach, the little hop step he does before that move, is that tall or is it just that? That's a, that is a little bit in him. Yeah, and we had some receivers, they're so athletic that they kind of get their own little style in them. We would rather they're running and set and go. But some of them get to the point where they've run the route that goes this way so much 
they give them a little bit of, like I'm going to run a flat route. And I, we give them some freedom to do that as they become veterans. That they, you know, they know what they're doing. As long as they set it and go, you know, set him outside and go inside, as long as they do that, we're okay with it. Uh, yeah, here's the one. This is another really good receiver. Outside technique. Okay, he's got an outside technique and he's fairly tight. He's kind of like press. His route right now is a corner route. That's what he's supposed to run. And this guy is playing outside to prevent that. So what he's got to do is he's going to say, okay, he's outside technique on me, and I got to get by him. So that I'm going to get to him. You see the same hop step. This one is even more as a hop step. He's going to set him outside, get his hand off him real quick. It happens so fast you almost can't see his hand. His hand goes like this and gets his hand off him, and then he rolls right over the top to the corner of him. Okay? This guy's job is to jam him and not allow that to happen. But he can't do it because he frees him. The other thing I want you to watch is how wide he gets his feet. He's there trying to jam him like this, and by him going outside first, he ends up getting like this. And he's stuck again. He's got this real wide base as a defender. He can't do anything with it. So if you watch the line, you'll set him outside, set him outside, outside, go inside. And he's right over the top. A little bit better here, one. You sort of get the idea that, yeah, it's. It, it, I think language wise, it's easy. You just have to be persistent in making sure that they do it correctly. And you're saying, okay, there's some routes that are underneath those guys, quick outs and flats. You're not doing it on that. You're only doing this technique when you're saying you got to get past these guys and now make your decision on these guys. So these are going to be the posts, the seams, the streaks, the corner routes, where you got to get past this underneath coverage. And it, now you're going to play somebody that they're not even going to try to jam you. So it doesn't matter. You just run down the field and they're going to let you run down the field. But somebody is going to try to teach their kids to reroute you as you're trying to get down the field. And if they don't know how to do this, then they're going to get rerouted completely out of their route. So he's got a, he got a post route down the field and he's getting rerouted all the way over here. Now he's got to get all the way back and get that post route. They, it, it, the route's dead. They can't do it. So they have to know how to do it when you do play someone that is going to try to reroute you. Set him to his technique. Set him outside and go inside. Set him inside and go outside. Oh, boy. Oh, hold on. We got, we got this. We got, we got this. It happened the other day, so yeah. I'll just, I'll go back. Okay, we got to kick it back up again. So. What happens like against the guy that got the inside leverage on you and wants to widen your heart? Like you're on a seam or that that reap route on the safety and he won't be I mean he's screaming at you to get you. If you're coming this way, yeah. there are times, and our kids get pretty good at this. They know he's inside technique, but as they're running, they feel like he's kind of crossing. So they actually set him outside and go underneath him okay. and go up there. And that's the, yeah, there are some people that are really screaming this way. And they're trying to get you, and they actually will set a boat like they're running an out route and go underneath them. So they're treating them almost like they're already outside. Okay. And then they go outside and go inside. And then and we've had, after a while, it's, it's, kids are amazing. They, you start to teach them these basic things, and then they start to figure other things out by what you taught them as a base thing. And they can, we've had guys that they know, well, he's inside, and if I go straight up the field, I'm going to run into him because he's going there. So they actually come off the ball and throttle down a little bit, and then they go wild. So they, they, get, they get to the point where they can, they're getting really pretty good. Kids are pretty smart. They're a lot smarter than I was growing up. So <laughs> I, you have to give them some freedom to, to you know, make sure they understand it, and make sure they know what you're trying to do, and then you, you let them go. Some of these are some sets, right? Yeah, it's all sets. Oh, right here? Yeah. Down here? Okay. If you can run that back. Uh, and again, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to look like they're just running right by them, but they're actually setting them. I think it's this guy, right? Yeah. Setting. So he's inside, he's setting just a little quick hit set and went by him because the guy's trying to jam him. Yeah. So up here, yeah. Set him outside, go inside, and just run right by him. This is the This is better? Yeah, let's go back. As bees again. Uh, Setting outside, go inside, 
and roll inside. Okay. And again, uh, some of it, they look so so at ease that this one here. Okay, watch this one right here, this one. Okay, inside, setting inside. Well, that's, that's a good one because he actually worked his way outside. So he ended up setting him outside and going inside. Okay. Can we see that one again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we end up setting him outside and go inside. So all, all these are they're, they're techniques that you're basically giving them to kind of it's, a, it's tools in their bag to be able to operate out there on the field. Is that, uh, <laughs> Which one? Right. Yeah, this is one of the Let's just say right. So these are, they're just kind of working on its setting. And you can see how the hand's going down. They're just kind of working on the, the mechanics of it. Setting. Setting inside, go outside. Setting inside, go outside. Same thing. They, they were just working on this in the summertime. And we told them to throw the balls underneath, so you're also seeing them turn their body back, turn their, turn their body back to the ball, turn the body back to the ball, turn the body back to the ball. Okay, now this is, uh, this is probably one of the best route runners, one of them, the few great route runners in the NFL, he doesn't play any longer. His name is Isaac Bruce, and he played for the St. Louis Rams for years. And, a very close friend of mine was his offensive coordinator, and he said in all the years he was a coach in the NFL, this was the best route runner he ever had. So if you watch Isaac, he's going to be on his inside, and it's just going to be a very subtle setting and go. And run away from him. Same thing up top. Set him inside, go outside, and buy him. Set him inside, go outside, and goodbye. And that's kind of what they were working on on the sidelines, as you saw in practice. Is it at the top again? Yeah, yeah. Set him and go by him. And we're going to do that with all our nine routes, all the fake routes. We're going to teach him how to run at that corner. Oh, set him and go by him. They're not as, sometimes, not even trying to reroute them. It's just getting by them. So you, you have a, you know, instead of just telling the receiver to go, you're actually telling them how to get past that corner quickly. So again, inside, set him inside, go outside, outside, set him outside, and go inside. So usually here's what happens with wide receivers. If they're playing an outside zone technique, and he's, he's backing out like this on him, and he's backing out with him. So he's outside, and I'm going straight. I'm going vertical on this one. As I'm going vertical, if he starts to close on me as I get to him, I'm going to set him and go this way down the sidelines. If he stays outside of me, I'm going to set him, bam, and go inside him. But you're going to make sure that as they get to the point that they've reached that corner, they're not just running straight by him and allowing the corner to just run right with him. They're going to set him one way or the other. And more often than not, it is going to be where they squeeze, you're going to, the corner squeeze into you, squeeze into you, boom, set him, and go outside of him, down the sideline. Okay? But if he's, he persists on staying outside of you, Go, 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 he stays outside. As I get to him, boom, set him. It freezes them just for a quick second, and now you got two more steps on him. Go by. Okay, the last thing technique was, these are the three things that we really emphasize. All our routes, uh, going in and going out, all our routes are what we call speed, speed cut, because we want to be as fast as we can getting into routes and out of routes, okay? So we're going to, and again, these two phrases right here, when you talk about over-teaching something, and I've, I've been with coaches that do this, they, they get into these poor kids' heads, and these young kids are trying to capture all this that you're telling them. And you're saying, okay, drop your shoulder, drop your knees, do this. They're thinking about a million things. These are the only things, these are the only two things we tell them in the language of the teaching. Don't chop your feet nice and smooth. 
That's, that's the only thing you tell me. We keep saying that over and over again. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Don't chop your feet. Nice and smooth. That's all we tell them. So we're telling them less things is a teaching thing. Every coach that crosses that receiver's path is going to use that language. We're never going to change that language. And we're basically simplifying the language so that in their head, all they're thinking of is nice and smooth. Don't chop your feet. Don't chop your feet. And we call it speed cuts. We're just trying to be nice and smooth. Don't chop your feet. Don't chop your feet. Nice and smooth. This is Cole Beasley again. Nice and smooth coming out of it. Nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. Don't chop your feet. Emmanuel chopped his feet a little bit on that one. But it, it takes time because they're so used to it. As they turn corners, that you have to get them to the point where it's just real smooth. Now, we've talked to, well, this is, uh, yeah, you know, we're talking about, uh, if you watch Isaac Bruce here, if you watch his body, now he's the best man, you know, so it's like something to at least show kids so they can emulate it. He just dropped, he just turned it out and did out of things so fast. But that's why he was such a great route runner. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth, nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Okay, there's no chop in his feet. Nice and smooth, don't chop your feet. So everything we do is speed cut. Now, if you talk to some of the best defensive backs in the NFL, they will tell you, point blank, I hate guys that know how to speed cut because I'm chasing them all day long. If you chop your feet, I close on you right now. Okay, so if you get into this stuff, they're closing. And they, they close the gap because you you slowed down your route. Guys that come out of the route full speed, they, they hate those guys because they're going full speed and they're chasing them all day long. You know, they, they don't like it. So we are going to teach our receivers to speed cut, speed cut, speed cut. Speed cut. Okay, so you're looking at this route up top here, I'm sorry. It's a five step out. And, and we if we have time to look at this route. Uh, it's, it's got some conversions to it, but he's got. A, if this guy backs out, he's got a five-step out. But if you watch his route, it's not one, two, three, four, five, and then come out of it and chop feet. He's going one, two, three, four, five, boom, one, two, three, four, five, and he's coming out of that thing. He'll end up being in between eight and ten yards, depending on the length of his stride <clears throat> on a five-step out. So just watching the kid up top, just roll out of it. See how much separation he gets? He's out of it so quickly. The defensive back, has, he doesn't have the time to break on it because he's just out of it so quickly. Speed cut. Is it down here? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, the bottom. Okay. Same route. Speed cut. There's no chop in the feet. So it's always nice and smooth, no chop in the feet. It's just thumb right? Inside here? Mm -hmm. Thumb. Yeah. The two receivers inside both have speed cuts. You see how fast Emmanuel is out of his route. because we've learned over the long haul. It helps our kids with their routes. It helps them how to catch the ball correctly. It helps them in how to get past the underneath coverage so they don't get rerouted. And all those little things make your passing game a little more efficient. A little bit, a little bit, you're a little bit quicker into the, into the route, past people, and you're going to catch the ball correctly. Okay. Um, let's see. Right here. You can see it's just, it, it almost looks rounded, okay? But the thing you're not seeing is his feet get closer together and get into little choppy steps. It's just a little speed cut right now. Yeah, that's okay. This is a big route up here on the back side. Um, and that's, I think that's the route we're going to Okay, yeah, this is actually, a, this is the route we're going to, one of the routes we're going to look at. This is the back side of it. 
But if you see him up here, he's a deeper out, he's a deeper out. See how he comes? And the other thing you'll notice about him, and it's again, it's an emphasis we do, they will never come out of a route and, be, and stay at the same level. They're coming out of the route and they're coming downhill because that protects them. Okay? If you go level, we tell them actually parallel at worst, but we really like them to come downhill. If I can, I've seen this so much in the United States in high schools. Kids come in and they drift up on the route and they just get knocked out by the safety. Uh, they're coming, our kids are coming downhill. So if you watch out again, you know, he's very smooth in the top of the route, but if you watch him, he'll start coming downhill right now to get underneath that guy. Okay? So they are always coming downhill. So we'll say things like, okay, this is a this is a deep dig route, it's 18 down to 16. Okay, this is an in route, it's 10 yards down to 8. Okay. So we're not just saying it's at 10 yards, we're saying 10 yards down to 8, 18 down to 16. You want to go Wow. Yeah, let's, let's look at a rock. You guys want to just look at a rock? Yes, sir. Good. What's the speed they run at? If you go 18 yards down the field, they look like they cruise a lot. They can breathe a lot. They, yeah. they, they, you can't speed cut really full speed. Is that you go, I, actually, our kids get pretty good at yeah. speed cutting full speed. Right. Yeah, they do. Um, now, some kids are reading things. They are looking at things as they go. So it looks like they're slow down. Uh, other kids are so dumb and natural. They're actually going pretty fast. But it looks like they're going slow. Uh, we were very fortunate at SMU, we had four receivers that have all ended up in the NFL, and they're they're very good. They're very fast. That kid right there, he runs a 10 400 meters, and so he he has some speed. He has some top end speed. Uh, and Emmanuel Sanders, number 17, who's where the Denver Broncos now. Emmanuel, he was a 200 meter guy. Now he was 20.8. So they, they, we had a couple kids that could really run. Uh, but then what we had to do. If you get a kid that can run pretty well, you have to teach him how to run routes correctly. Because otherwise they're just out of control. And you've lost the advantage of their speed. They, they don't have an advantage in their speed any longer. These kids have an advantage with their speed because they know how to run the routes. They know how to catch the ball correctly. They know how to speed cut. So now you're taking advantage of who they are. You can do this hard. Okay. Yeah. Coach, will you um, teach them which foot will initiate the turn? Yes. Inside, outside, which is the first that goes directional? Well, a lot of times, if it's an odd step and we're going outside, they're actually going to start turning on the even step. So if it's a five, you know, five step out, it's actually on four, they start to turn their foot this way, and five is rolling here. Okay? So they'll, same thing on a four step out. On a four step out, their line will start rolling on that third step and go. But we usually tell them about a four step out is about six yards. And a five step out is kind of eight to ten ish, nine ish, depending on the stride of the young man. Is that, that sometimes they're a little different. But it, 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 with some receivers, it's uh, first and ten, you run that five step out, it's another first down. You know, they'll, they'll catch it and pick up another half yard to yard with you guys right there. It'll be a first down. Plays play on the pause. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to apologize on this, and I'm going to check this one if I'm going to mess it up with that. Anyone will go back. Okay, so no, let's, let's go here. I'll stop for this. Okay, this route, and we'll walk this route a little bit. This route is a route that comes actually from the San Francisco 49ers back when Bill Walsh was their coach and Jerry Rice was the receiver. It's their number one route. They used to call it 22ZN. We call it Georgia. We try to Thing, bring things down to one word states and cities. So we call it Georgia. It is a curl flat concept, and pretty much everybody runs some kind of a curl flat concept. Well, this is it was started by the 49ers and Bill Walsh. So as you can see, most of the routes are pretty static. In other words, they don't change and convert a great deal. And even this route, which looks like it converts all over the place really doesn't convert a great deal. This is a West Coast offensive route. And we're, we were a run and shoot offense. So I had to teach quarterbacks to see this a little differently because it's Coach Walsh and Coach Jones were good friends uh, before Coach Walsh passed away. And they used to play golf all the time. So Coach Walsh actually walked June completely through this thing. And then we adapted it to the four wides and the run and shoot offense. Uh, this is a curl at 12 yards. Basically, that's what it is. 
So he's going to go up and he's going to hit that foot in the ground, that right foot in the ground, if I'm on the right side. And here's, this is really important to us. We're going to hit this right foot in the ground, and we're going to take this left foot and come directly back down to the quarterback. What you will see with your receivers, and they will do this, is they run the thing. So, as they run it, as they hit that 12 yards, that right foot, their left foot is going to go above their right foot. It's starting to turn, and that's going to make them round it. Because now they have to round it to come down. So we really emphasize that they hit the right foot on the ground, and then the left foot comes directly back to the court. It's got to come start right here. If it goes above the route, that was right foot, he can't do that. He's going to have to round it. Okay? We want them to hit that thing, boom, and come right back to the quarterback. And catch the ball coming back to the quarterback. Okay? The only adjustments they have, and it doesn't happen very often, in the nine years we were in Hawaii, I saw it happen one time against Boise State. If he comes up and he hits his right foot in the ground and the corner has worked his way inside of you, then he's going to hit this left foot and actually come down this way, away from the corner. Almost every other time, the corner's going to be outside. And you're going to hit here and come directly back down to the quarterback. So you can come back down this end to the quarterback. Okay? So the adjustment is if he's outside, come back directly to the quarterback. If the corner ends up inside of you, work your way down the stem and come back away from the quarterback. Did, did I explain that okay? Okay. The only other adjustment is press man. So I got press man on me, and I'm going, I'm going to set name, and I'm going, and he's running right with me. I'm going to hit my foot in the ground, and I'm going to go flat and run away from him. Okay, so it becomes a speed cut away from him. Flat. That's, so those are the three adjustments for the curl. This is a flat route. It's not drawn very well here. It's not rounded. It's a diagonal right now. And we'll show it to you on film. So you got these two routes in the front side. Flat curl. The back side, he's going to come to the back side guard. And if it's zoned, he's just going to hook up and wait there about three to four yards up the field on the last bench. And we really don't go like this. It's more like this. The hook up. Yeah, it's more like that one. If it's man, he can keep going. And we also give him the option that as he's coming across, he sees nothing but green out here. There's no bodies, there's no people, there's nothing. He can keep going too. But if he comes out there in his zone and there's a wheel linebacker out there, he's going to hook up. Now the one subtle thing we do with him on this, and we just learn this over time, that route on the backside is coming across. As he comes across, what every kid naturally does, and I'm sure you've seen it before, they come across here, and they hook up, and they face the quarterback like this. It's like a check down route. And they're looking right at the quarterback like this. What we found is when they catch the ball, their first instinct is to go that way or that way. And they get nothing. They gain nothing. So what we started to do is they came across, and they hooked up. We had them turn, they turn their back to the sidelines and face this way to the quarterback. Now we're inviting the quarterback to put it right here. Now where did they go? Step of field. Okay? And that took us a while to figure that out. So you'll see this in here sometimes catching straight ahead. It took us a while to get it to the point where we turn them because now we're inviting them to go vertical as quick as they can. Okay? And then this rod is what you just saw out on. Theoretically, it's 18 down to 16. Okay? So really what you have, and this is the simplicity row, is 1-2, one, 1-2. Two, one, two. One two on the front side, one two on the back side. Okay. And you uh, for the curl route, you you always have you only convert it to an end when you're a press man. If he's off man, you still run the curl. Exactly. If he's off man, he's just backing up, plant that foot in the ground, come right back to the corner. Okay. Yeah, good point. How will you work with this leverage? You will push him again to where he is, like yes. set him up to a technique, yes. and then break it. Yeah. It, now, if he is off and just backing up, like. Most of the setting you saw will be with slides, trying right. to pass them in. But the outside, the corner, usually it's just going to back out 3D, 4D, off main. And you just you go vertical. There's no setting or anything, you just go vertical. Yeah. The only time you're going to have to set it is he's press man on you. And you, you see what his technique is. Is he, is he pressing outside half? Is he pressing inside half? And you set him, get on it. And again, you got to do one of two things. OK? 
okay, not to get too complex with this, but if I got a man playing press man on and I'm setting, and I'm going, and I was able to get inside of him, then boom, I'm going to go, speed cut. Now, sometimes that doesn't happen. You set him, and I'm on his outside. One of two choices. I can't get over the top of him. I take my left hand, I pull him, and go flat underneath him. If I can get over the top of him, I'm in this position, I roll right over the top and come down. Because what happens is when you go down, he goes that way, and you lose him. Okay? So if you, you do get press man, I don't know how much press man you get. I mean, we, after a while, we didn't get a lot of press man because the receivers so fast. And they were scared to death to get too close to us. They were playing more off of us. Okay, let me just real quickly. Nine times out of ten, we're on the flat curl side. Okay? There are only two coverages that tell a quarterback off the front side and out of the back side. Two coverages. One is cover two. Okay? So that quarterback sees two deep, two corners rolled up, two half safeties, and they're playing this way. As he started to drop, he's now thinking I'm going backside. One to two, under to over. Okay? So he's going under to over against a two deep look. The reason that is, is you've got a, curl, a corner rolled up right there, waiting for that flat, and in cover two, the Sam Packers running right to the curl. Okay? That's, that's how the Sam Packers are taught to do. Okay? So cover two, backside, one to two, under to over. We do have one other coverage that occasionally will send us backside. Uh, we call it three buzz. Okay? It's, this, it's this kind of a coverage. It starts as too high right here, and this safety kicks straight down, and that Sam runs right out to the flat. So the, the Sam and the strong safety switch responsibilities. Most cover three, the strong safety's got the flat, and Sam's got the curl. Okay, but in three buzz, it starts too high, he kicks straight down. Now, he may kick right down on top of that curl, and the Sam's running right out there under the flat. So that's another coverage that we will go backside on. Okay? But the main one is cover two. The main one's cover two that we go backside on. So every 3D, 4D, man free, anything else, front side, curl to flat. Okay? Okay. Splits. And this was one of those things that Bill Walsh was kind enough to let us into that he was doing that not a lot of people were doing. Most people, when they run their curl flat, they have normal splits. They got the curl, they got some kind of swing or some kind of flat. So it's a curl flat concept. Well, if your splits are too wide on the curl and the flat, if your splits are too wide, then the flat defender can hold off this curl and still play the flat. If you cut your splits down, and our rules are if we're on this left hash, he's two yards outside that hash. Okay, so he's just two yards outside the other hash and trips. Now, those are fairly tight splits. Now, you got a Sam Backer, he's real tight. He's running the curl, but the flat's going right now. Well, he can't hold this curl off because the flat's already out there, you know, in, he's already got it beat by leverage. So he has to get out there and open up the curl, or he gives you the flat. So the, the key to this route, according to Bill Walsh, was cut your splits down on the curl to flat. Cut your splits down, make it really hard on that flat defender to play both. You can't play both if the, if the splits are cut. So we've even run this thing out of a stack formation, where it's really tight. And it's, just, it's really hard for them to do that. OK, one last thing. Or show the route. This route is you're asking your quarterback to say, make a decision off the flat defender, whether you're going to run the curl or run the flat. Well, you know defenses, it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to figure out who the flat defender is. It could be the corner in 2 deep. It could be a nickel. It could be a strong safety kicking down. It could be a Sam Backer. You don't know. I never want our quarterbacks, ever to have to make a decision. After they've got the ball in their hands, now I've got to figure out who's the flat defender. They know every snap, pre-snap, where their eyes are going. They already know ahead of time. That's why we get the ball out so fast. So here's our, here's our rule on flat defenders. <coughs> you look at the guy on number two, okay? 
If he is inside on number two, we're going to read it from the corner. Our eyes are going to go right to the corner. So if he's inside number two, then I'm a quarterback, then I'm going to snap the ball. My eyes go right to the corner. He's going to tell me, do I have the flat or do I have the curl? If he is outside number two, we're going to read from him. Because he's probably the flat defender if he's outside number two. If he's outside number two, our eyes go to that end. Snap right now. You can say he's got flat or I got the curl. Okay? So you're never putting a quarterback in a funky position where I don't know who he is and I gotta figure out who he is. And even if he's wrong, it becomes right. Okay? For instance, he's inside number two. So I'm gonna read it from the corner. Okay, that oftentimes if they're inside number two, that means the corner's the flat defender and you go a little down. He does it. They back out and play three deep with it. Well, that corner, that's where my eyes are, because that's who I'm reading. He backs out, where am I going to go with the ball? Right to the flats. Because he's already out leveraged the guy that's playing inside of him. So he's, he's, he's correcting it. Okay? And it gets the ball out quickly, which in some offenses, and we've had them before, where we're playing against people that are really, really good on defense, and our offensive line is they're doing their best, but <laughs> we're going one, two, three, balls out. One, two, three, balls out. That helps our offense, but the only way you can help your quarterback is your quarterback has to be able to be in a position to say, before the snap, I know where my eyes go. Now, sometimes we're saying, on this route, take your eyes to the corner, read from there. On this route, take your eyes to the half-field defender, read it there. But on flat defender throws, that's how we do it. Inside number two, read it from the corner. Outside number two, read it right from here. Okay? That makes it fast. Yes, sir? Head up. Head up is the inside. So it's, it's kind of like the setting. Mm -hmm. He's head up to inside, read it from the corner. Now, here's the other thing that can happen with quarterbacks, young ones particularly. It'll be like that. And they can't tell. Is he inside or outside? Coach, I can't tell what he is. Pick one. You're going to be right. Because if you pick one on the snap of the ball, your eyes are on somebody right now. Okay? And particularly if it's one high, guess who they're going to look at? The guy at number two. Because if it's one high, what's that corner going to do? He's got to come out. He's got to come out. So let's read it from here. If it's too high, pick one. You'll be okay. You'll be right. Okay? So that's how we teach the teaching of the reading of this route. That's how we do the splits of this route. That's how we run the routes of this route. So let's take a look at that. <laughs> ten, ten more minutes. Okay. Yeah. No, just go. I mean, yeah. was, this is just out of a. You know, we can run this thing to the same receiver side, on the backs, this flat defender. We can run this thing all different ways. Okay. Okay. See how tight the splits are? Okay. That makes it really hard on this guy because watch this route real quick here. See how it's kind of an angle. He can't, he can't play this round and hold off this curl. He can't do it if the splits are tight. Okay. So as far as the quarterback is concerned, let's take a look at him. If you had to say right now, and you're the quarterback, who would you say you're going to read it off of? Which one? You're going to read it off of him or you're going to read it off of him? Where is he on him? Okay, he's outside. So let's just read it off him. So that's where our quarterback's eyes are right now. He's not having to figure it out later on. He's right now, his eyes are on that guy. So as he starts to go, the rule we have is if that's your guy, and he crosses the stem of the route, go to curl. If he stays inside the stem of the route, go flat. Okay? What's the thing behind that vertical stem by the, the flat route? That he's not going out right away. Like um, pushing vertical for a couple steps. Okay, okay sorry. Go back. The, the, the angle? Yeah. This goes back to Miles Davis, and he's the original creator of the run and shoot offense. And he was on our staff for several years, and I'm very fortunate to be around him. He's like 85 years old. Actually, he's 25, but he's 85. <laughs> and he's, he, he invented this whole offense in Oregon. And his, this was his thinking. All those years 
particularly tight ends with a, they go up and run the out. Okay? Well, his thinking was, if they're running parallel to the line of scrimmage and catching it out, they're running right to the sidelines. He wanted to create a route that is on an angle, so as you catch it, you're already turning up the sidelines. And he called the route a build-up route, because you're building it up, catching it, and you're already turning up the sidelines, rather than running right into the sidelines. So you bring it out. That was, that was just his thinking. Now, the reality is, as it grew in his offense, he also saw that you got the ball out a lot quicker because your, your kid is ready to catch it right now going that, that angle. So he ends up he ends up being in a position to catch the ball a little quicker. Now watch at the top of this route, watch Alger's left foot hit the ground, right foot comes straight back down to the quarterback. Is this, a, is this a specific down distance play? Is that a play you play at a specific down distance? You know what? It, it, it's, it's a 12 yard curl. So, in the back of your mind, you got third and eight, third and nine. It's a nice route to have. Uh, third and ten. You know. Because I'm just thinking about defense. If defense knows what you're doing, mm -hmm. they can kind of force you to throw it flat all the time. Like run down, make the play, and if it's third and 12, kind of live with that because you can't really stop that. Okay, now here, here's the thing that flat route. Because it's caught an angle, that dog about thing gets about 12 to 14 yards. Here's, here's the thing that I found in that one, because I did a study of our own receivers in Hawaii over a two-year period, kind of in the middle of our time there. And I looked at every flat route that we threw on different routes. Just every route we ended up being a flat route. And when we, and this is we really emphasize in the quarterback, put the ball under his chin. Again, we're back to language now. I don't describe it five different ways. He's going to hear that from day one to year five when he leaves us. Under the chin. We're saying, put it right here. Okay? And you can use whatever language you want. Mouse used to say six inches out front. Nick Rolovich now says, throw it to the face mask. But that's all he says, that's all Mouse said, and that's all I say. You know, just put it under the chin. So he's hearing the same language all the time. Rather than me describing it different ways to him, he's only hearing it one way. So, under the chin. When he catches under the chin going full speed, we average between 12 and 14 yards every time he caught that. When we threw it behind him, it was behind him and blow or down here or something, we averaged between 2 and 4 yards. Okay, so when he had to stop or turn to catch the ball, we only averaged 2 to 4 yards. But when he caught it going this way, going full speed, turning up the sidelines, it averaged between 12 and 14 yards. So just that little thing, that's why we emphasize accuracy so much. Put it under his chin, put it under his chin. We throw so many rounds, one, two, three, boom, put it under his chin. And, and they work on that. And he catches it going full tilt. You know, you can see, if you go ahead and run this route, this is the press man look, so you can see how to run flat. But watch his route. I mean, as, if he had caught this thing, you know, he's, he's going full speed here, and we'll catch it. He'll get up to here. He'll get eight to nine yards. Okay. Plus, we have a whole array of other things. We have a whole series of things around the 30, 10, 30, 12. What, what is the counteraction to this? Uh, what else do you run out of this alignment? Because uh, the alignment will... Yeah, exactly. If the splits, if that's the only thing you're running out of the splits, they'll see the splits. So we have about four other routes that we run out of that thing. One of which is that army, it's an army route that we mm. talked to you about. And we also have one that's a real normal take two, sail, flat, it's a flood route okay. on this side. And we have a couple others that, that will run out of those same splits. So we, we're not able to say when they're in these splits. Tell them the other thing to do, go on those splits and run them. Mm -hmm. yeah. get, get, tell them to get in the tight splits and then and run outside zone the other way. So you, you can use those splits in running plays as well. Mm -hmm. okay, again, if you watch Aldrich right here, um, he's got press band. So he's going to set into his technique. If you go back and see where his technique is, see how his technique is just a little bit outside? He's splitting his outside out. So if you're if you're you have an outside technique, which way is he going to set it? Outside. Yeah. So watch what Alder does. Sets him outside and goes inside. He'll set him outside, outside and go inside, lean on him, snap and come downhill. Okay? So that's the adjustment to press man for the curl route. And it's really the only one we have, but the other one just doesn't come up. We teach it to them, but because of the splits, 
Those splits that tight, it's really rare to get a corner that's going to play inside that wide receiver because he's going to run out all day long. So 99 times, 9,000 times out of 9,001, he's going to be outside. So you're, you're going to be coming back down. Okay, okay where is he on him? Outside. He's outside. So read him. But he's a special. Yeah. Uh, and and I, again, I'll, I'll see these two guys right here. Anytime that we want to take a route and switch those two receiver routes, we would just tag special to it. So the route is called Georgia. So this is called Georgia Special. And Georgia Special just means now the inside guy has got the flat, the middle guy's got the cross. That's all it is. And sometimes if you get man free, if you think you're getting man free, you can run that. They kind of pick, almost pick for each other to be one of the flats. Now this is a, this is a little different because it's a busted coverage by Central Florida. But see how he's outside the stem of the route? He's outside the stem of the route, so we go right there. Now the reason he's so doggone open is because they busted the route. Like they busted the coverage. This is really four cross main. They're bringing seven guys. And this character right here is supposed to be on him main. And he busted it. But we tell our quarterbacks, okay, I'm never going to say, why didn't you see him going across the field? He's reading his thing. He read it correctly. He was outside. He got outside the skin of the rock. He threw the curl. You're good. You're good. I'm not going to start saying to him, you know, hey, you're supposed to see that too. No, that's, that's not fair to him. Okay, now, on this one, outside, right? You read from there. As he's ready to throw the ball, because we, we're just one, two, three, throw. Okay, if you look at him, I don't know if we can freeze it, but right there, he's ready to throw the ball. He's already made his decision up. This guy is inside the stem of the route. So where are you going to throw the ball? In the flats. Okay? He's inside the stem of the route, so we throw the flat. What did you see from defenses? How they, how, I mean, they, they realized after a while you played center Florida. Did they adjust? They, what is the tricks they try to do? Well, to, what you, I guess what you got to understand, this is maybe one route out of about 20, 20 25 in the run. So they make the decision that they're trying to figure out, do we run certain things in certain situations? And they're trying to, then they try to actually play the play. You're actually, and Boise was the first one to start doing this to us, where they're actually teaching their receivers, I mean, sorry, defensive backs, that Okay, when he goes to the flat, let's read the corner. Let's read the curl. Okay, so what we started doing is going Georgia Z9. So it's not a match at all. Yeah, so what so they would that corner would go right to the curl, and that guy would go right to the flat. So you start doing things like Georgia, boom, set, go. Okay? Stutter and go. Because he's coming right to the he's flying to the curl. So you go Georgia stutter. Stutter and go. You know, so it's, a, it's all, you know, when you play somebody every year, and they're good. Dan Hawkins was a very good coach, and I had the chance to work with him this year at the USA national team. He's a very good coach, and we talked about that. And it was just a chess match. Okay, he sees what we do out of this, and so those are those splits, and the only time he goes in the flats and that splits, then look for the curl. And, okay, so hey, if you see that, okay, Georgia stutter, go. You know, but Georgia start and go corner, and now you got a flat, I mean a corner, flat, over here now, and they're jumping this in here, and we're going over here. So it's it's always a chess match. You know, and sometimes it comes down to his kids may be better than your kids. And, yeah, sure. yeah. Our kids might be better than their kids. And some official makes a crazy call that allows us to win and us to lose. <laughs> Coach. Yes, sir. It's oh, sorry. It's time. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's let's just. Uh, I mean, you you can see just curl flat. And if you look at this, and we'll try to leave as much as we can for people. If you go through these routes, you just, just read how we're telling you to read it and watch the quarterback make his decision. And what we're not getting to, unfortunately, is towards the end of this, we've got all the cover two looks where the quarterback comes back, he sees his cover two, boom, comes back side, under to over. Okay? And so Now, fortunately, he did see one because we showed it when we were talking about how Al caught the ball. That's the dig route on the back side. If you looked at that one, that was a cover two look on this side, or it was that three buds. He starts there, he sees that coverage, and on the back side, one to two. Okay? That's why we liked it so much, because it's real simple. One, two, one, two. And it's a pretty quick decision, 
I can see cover two pretty quickly. One, two, back side. So you can get it out fairly quick. And you can come out of different formations. And the way, the way San Francisco did it with Jerry Rice is they started moving him around and getting mismatches. They put him, well, this is a tight end. But he's right here. They put Jerry Rice in here. Normally he's a wide receiver. Well, he's got this crossing route. Well, Steve Young had just know that's a one on one between a linebacker and Jerry Rice. So he forget the curl the flat. He's going one on one with Jerry Rice in the underneath on the backside. So they, they started moving personnel around, coming out of different formations, and it kind of just grows. You know? But this is how it starts. It starts here, and you grow the way you want it to grow based on your own kids and your own personnel. Okay, I apologize for not getting to the final part of this thing. But we have maybe the chance tomorrow morning, because normally there would be a Florian Grind with the second part of the use program. And is, if he is quick enough today on part one, we maybe can continue um, you with, can my with your, uh, <laughs> well, with this I thing. I have glass yet. He drops so far. Okay, so we have a 10 15 minute break. Thank you very much, coach. Thank you. Thank you. And then we will continue with. Uh, 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 uh,